welcome to Arts and Entertainment. I'm Deborah Gilbert, your host. And again, thanks so much for being here. So glad you could spend some time with me and my guest. Well, we're going to highlight somebody that's been here before. It's Eric Dillner, the CEO of the Shoreline Arts Alliance based in Madison, Connecticut. And Eric, thanks so much for being here today. So nice to have you again. Well, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure, Deborah. You know what? You were here in December of 2020, and I wanted to bring you back. We'll talk about the Shoreline Arts Alliance in just a second, but let's refresh the memory of the viewer. Tell us about yourself. Let's go back into your background. Oh, uh, well, um, again, I'm, I'm uh, currently the, the CEO of the Shoreline Arts Alliance, uh, but I, I started my whole, I'll call it artistic career uh, it, as, a, as an opera singer, believe it or not. Uh, prior to that, I was a hockey player, so I, I kind of, um, you know, enjoy the excitement of, of, of the stage, whether it's on the ice or on the uh, uh, on the, the big stage. So I had a big, big, wonderful, quick um, uh, career. Uh, got a chance to sing at the New York City Opera and many places around the country and around the world, and just um, found that what I loved is the process of of how uh, we create productions. And so um, that creation process kind of led me to what, what's next for me in terms of um, how can I, I help uh, the, the community grow? So I ran an opera company for a while uh, and then a Broadway company and then uh, worked at a, a five seater complex down in a five theater complex down in, uh, in Florida and, and learned that there's just so many ways that artists are trying to express themselves that I kind of, was looking for a way to um, to not just be in the performing arts world, but in in the uh, the world of of all art forms. And I landed the perfect opportunity here in Connecticut, uh, where my wife is from. So it was good to to come here and and have the opportunity to be around family and celebrate all art forms through Shoreline Arts Alliance. Uh, Shoreline Arts Alliance is like a um, let's see, we're in our uh, forty some odd year uh, of of helping the arts on the shoreline, but we've grown into a much larger um, or a geographic uh, uh, impactful organization. Through COVID, we actually had the opportunity to grow um, outside of Connecticut as well. Um, so Deborah, I don't know, what do you think? Should I share, share a little bit about the Reopen Connecticut Arts Venues series that we've been, been working on? Yes, please go ahead. So our, our series is, um, we, we saw that this darn pandemic was was right on top of us. And so um, my wife, who is a voice teacher in Manhattan, came home and said, I don't think I'll be going to Manhattan for, for a while. And we started to worry about what are all these arts organizations going to do? How are they going to either stay open or many of them are already closing? So I reached out to Yale School of Public Health, uh, the dean, Sten Fairmund, and I asked him how we could right now be proactive in thinking about how to reopen Connecticut arts venues. And so he and I came up with a plan to create a webinar series. Um, actually, we have 17 of them. Well, actually 16 we've done, and we're about to do another one Friday, uh, which I can give you that date, Friday, Friday February, 20, uh, February 25th, and it's at nine o'clock. You can hop on Shoreline Arts Alliance's website, www.shorelinearts.org, um, to, to see this. Anyway, these webinars are help the arts um, find their way through what's next. And would you believe that here we are a couple of years later, we're still trying to figure out what's next. So each webinar is basically based on a survey now that we send out to the community who's following us and ask them what they need. Um, and last week, uh, I just couldn't believe once again, the outpouring of needs from the arts of what we should do related to moving forward. How do we return? How do we return again? Some of them opened and then they had to unfortunately close again. Uh, Broadway, how they uh, they open and then they have a crisis and then they re, you know come back. How do they come back more strongly? This has developed into about 15,000 followers across the country and, and I should even say around the world, but but mostly around our country. Um, follow our website, website I, I mean our webinars and, um, and gather that information. We've transferred that now into a on-site process. So we went to like Good Speed Opera and helped them open. Uh, we went to the Florence Griswold Museum. We've been up at the Warner, uh, Warner Theater. We've, we've been all over the state of Connecticut to help people um, reopen. And then we actually uh, 
found a wonderful um, donor to provide uh, a half million masks to the arts. So we became a distribution center for masks. Uh, and we hauled them all over the place, kept renting U-Hauls and taking them here and there. And, and places like The Guard had, had got a bunch in the Schubert Theater and Bushnell. Um, and when I say a bunch, 50, 60,000 masks, you know, would go to uh, one of these theaters or five boxes would go to a smaller institution. Uh, so anyway, our, our site visits are going in to help people with PPE. And then, uh, and now we're in the consulting basis uh, process where when an arts institution has a specific need that they need a little bit more clarity on, we can do a Zoom type situation or we'll go on site and help them with their, um, with their specifics. Um, we've been so, uh, so fortunate to have many donors step up to help us uh, along in this process. Um, but here we are today trying to figure out what do we do with consumer confidence? That's, that's the biggie. Now, you started out with hockey and your desire of that, and then you went into opera and theater and desire of that, and now you're at the Shoreline Arts Alliance. What was it that was the transformation process for you? Are you happy? Are you doing what you want to do? I, I love what I do. I think, actually, I'm a teacher at heart. Um, I think the being on the ice as a, as a player, um, I learned what you need, um, but then I became more about how do I share that information of what I need or what people need to perform that. And the same thing happened there with, um, with uh, going into an opera company, helping different artists work together to create a production. You know, you have your artistic director, you have your lighting designer, you have your costume designer, you have all these people who work ahead of time to create a show and they need a a mediator, uh, a guider, somebody to help them make sure that they make decisions and keep the process moving along. Uh, and so, um, and, and somehow I feel that is kind of a teaching thing. I, I'm, not, I'm not, managerial just sounds too stuffy for me. So um, we do, I, I guess, I guess I couldn't be happier because right now I get to, I'm, I'm also coaching hockey at the high school and the collegiate level. So I get to help uh, those people grow, come together as a team and work. And here we are uh, in the arts. We, we are a huge team trying to navigate this process of the pandemic and, and being a leader in that, that uh, movement to do so is, is a great joy uh, to help people see the light at the end of the tunnel uh, and, and grow who they are and what they're doing. So, you know, thanks for asking that question. I, I, I'm, I absolutely love what I do. Um, uh, Shoreline Arts Alliance is such a nimble company that we can find our way to, um, you know, I'll say adjust to the times what they are. And this was a perfect example of that. Now we think with Shoreline Arts Alliance is a certain part of the state of Connecticut. Are there other arts alliances in the state? There are. Some days we think we should change our name <laughs> uh, because we are so broad. Yes, um, depending, let's see, I think right now we're at seven uh, different arts councils around the state um, that serve a particular region. Our region is basically just outside of New Haven and East Haven, all the way up to Lyme and all of Middlesex County. That's the area that the state of Connecticut has suggested that we should, um, we should uh, basically do most of our advocacy work with, help folks with funding ideas, help funds with business, help ide ideas with building their businesses and those kinds of things. But we've been fortunate, we aren't really, um, we, we started actually with some statewide programs so we have, uh, our, have our tentacles out, out there all, all the state. COVID still around. How has it penetrated what you do as an agency, let alone the arts community in general? Yeah, COVID has changed so many things. Uh, it's made us better in many ways. Uh, we've, we've learned that we can do more. Um, we've learned that we can um, be at home and accomplish a lot of those menial tasks and get those done fast. And then so that then we're ready to get out there and really um, share our artistic uh, abilities. However, I think the biggest challenge is right now, we're feeling that consumers are not necessarily ready to get out of their homes and to the artistic events, the venues, et cetera. We're ready. The arts are ready for that. 
So um, the challenge is really how do these institutions continue to move forward uh, like ours? We, we have not had a gala, for instance, in two years, and that's our big gathering of people to get people together to celebrate the work that Shoreline Arts Alliance does. So um, we've actually, uh, I've got two, two, I, two things that we're doing that I'll share with you, but, but along that same line, we've, we've even come to the decision that um, perhaps a gala is not the route right now to be indoors. We do a Mardi Gras gala often and with masks and all that stuff, indoors, tight, lots of people do a Mardi Gras parade through the, the, the um, a hotel. I mean, all that sounds fun, but uh, we still have people who are not ready to do that. So we're looking for more of an, I'll say, audience appreciation launch rebirth of the arts type of, type of, a, of an event. Uh, we plan to do one in May uh, where we celebrate the rebirth, the reopening, the renaissance of, of arts coming back. But right now what we're doing it, uh, um, is we are, we've partnered with 30 arts institutions um, to create a, uh, I'll say a marketing blitz with a prize at the end of the road, uh, if you will. Um, and so we've created all 30 of these organizations, 30 plus organizations are um, help. We're all uh, packaged up a lot of arts project, uh, arts events together and are, are offering it in the form of a raffle. Now, the ra these funds, which that's probably the secondary process is, is the funds, uh, will go back right back into more of our helping consultations and making that something that we're not, we don't have to charge uh, an arm and a leg for. Instead, we can, we can help continue to give that. Um, but we created like, three packages. I'm going to tell you about them because they're really fun. We created a bulldog package. You can imagine what that is for. It's for like, uh, it's great for students, college students, contemporary music lovers, that kind of thing. It's 16 tickets to eight concerts total with a year's worth of free admission to Toad's Place with a guest. So, I mean, this is a great fun, 20 bucks for the, for the ticket and you have the opportunity to win uh, a lot of great, um, basically music type events. And then we have a Renaissance package, which is for um, really great, great for uh, arts lovers of all kinds, visual, performing, uh, all, all the arts, um, particularly focused on like theater and ballet as well. So um, you get a bunch of wonderful, wonderful things like that. And then our last package is called For Art's Sake. Um, and it's basically five, uh, I mean, uh, family memberships. I think there are nine in total for museums. Uh, so it's like the perfect uh, arts lovers gift bag uh, for families. So all of those three together make 30 institutions around the state, small and large. Don't, you know, we have the Buttonwood Tree up in Middletown, and we have um, the Aldrich Museum up in Ridgefield, and then we have, uh, you know, like uh, um, the Goodspeed Opera type types. So they're they're all all different size organizations. But the idea is that we want to get people excited about returning to the arts physically because we've done so many things online and so many for the last couple of years. So okay, let, it's. Let as oh. much as a as an effort to uh, get people to think about going to the arts as get them in, in the arts. Okay, let's hold that thought. I'm Deborah Gilbert. You're tuned into Arts and Entertainment. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Community TV, your neighborhood TV. Publicly funded and a reliable partner for cable companies nationwide. It provides transparent coverage of local and state government, education, and public programming. A digital town green that can be watched anywhere, anytime, and on any device. Watch us on today's high-tech distribution methods. Community TV in Connecticut. Local. Unfiltered. Reliable. And, and yours. yours. 
And welcome back to Arts and Entertainment. I'm Deborah Gilbert, your host. And again, thanks so much for being here. Well, I continue to uh, have my conversation with Eric Dillner, the CEO of the Shoreline Arts Alliance. And Eric, why don't we talk about the website? What will the viewer find when they go there? When they go to our website, they're gonna get a lot of great information. Um, we have a, a community calendar, which is spectacular. It, um, it's a place for uh, artists and arts organizations to share what they're doing, who they're looking to partner with, and of course, um, to invite uh, guests into their community. Um, we have an e-blast that goes out once a week, actually, to hi highlight everything that's on that, on that uh, calendar for the next seven, seven days. So we encourage you actually to come to our website and sign up for that, that newsletter. Uh, because it, you'll get it, um, it's on Wednesdays, it comes out and it looks at the, the, the following week. Uh, also on our website is really, a, there are a lot of student programs that we have um, that are, uh, I like to say my job is to find the patron who wants to support an artist and then have them help us with funds and with, with, uh, with their time and talent to, uh, to be able to then have us give great uh, arts awards to high school students. Um, and mentorships as well. So there's a lot of information there for your high school student who um, is looking for uh, a place to show their work, to get a, 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 a scholarship for theater, music, dance, visual arts, creative writing, um, visual, uh, the, the works. Um, it's all there uh, and that's going on right now. And we're also um, in the next month about to celebrate all the visual arts in our 26 towns, um, all kids, freshmen to, freshmen to senior uh, in, in any of the high schools or from this area and happen to go to another high school, uh, you know, a prep school or some, somewhere else outside of the area. As long as they're in our community, um, we then have judges judge all the work and then we hang a show, a visual arts show for them out at Lyme Academy. Uh, so there's an awful lot of uh, great um, opportunities there. Also, the things that I talked to you about, those webinars, um, they're all there. You could link and go back and look at some of them if you'd like. Um, and, and of course, uh, our raffle is there. So www.shorelinearts.org is the place to go. You can also text 203-601-7545. I had to look that up. 601-7545. And that'll take you directly, uh, directly there to the site as well. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lively site. There's an awful lot to do there. Um, but uh, most importantly, it's a place where you can kind of dip your toe into what's going on all over uh, the community. Uh, and you might be able to find something that you'd like to do this weekend or an organization you'd like to support. Uh, or, uh, and again, you can do it in many different ways. One of the things that my viewers might be interested to know and tell me what your thoughts are is that the individual performer or an organization is looking for funding. Would you be able to do something like that or do you gear them to go look elsewhere? Well, we, that's a wonderful question. Um, it's a big challenge right now for all of them. Um, yes, we, we mostly connect are a connector for all of that is, um, oh, you're, you're interested in um, you know, growing your business skills for your artistic project. So we might be able to actually link them to ideas for their uh, funding uh, stream so that then we can link them to a place where they could, could build those skills. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, many, many different ways. But um, typically what we're doing, unless it's for, uh, I'll say, high school kids, is we are, um, we're sharing being that conduit to find a way to, to help them grow. Um, the other way that they can do that also is by being a, uh, if it's an, an artist, is getting on our artist list on our, our website. Uh, because then when people are looking for an artist to commission a work, an artist to sing at their wedding, an artist to sing with their orchestra, a new trombone player for their orchestra, they come to our, our website and they look to see who's there to find out who who and what they do or, or a teacher in all those avenues. So um, there's a real good good link there. There's also a, a part of our website that's for call to artists. So, for instance, there's a there's a group that's putting on a, um, a, a battle of the bands type of event. And we're about to put that on our website that share, shares how you could 
be involved with your, your band. Now, you've mentioned what's happening at this time of year and what's going to be happening in May. How does the fall look of 2022 into 2023? Do you have things coming up? We do. We do. Absolutely. And actually, Friday at our webinar, we're going to talk about for institutions, for artists, you know, what kind of planning should we would, should we be doing? We've decided that we're going to do a uh, wonderful, uh, our images photography competition will take place in October. So it's a beautiful October, uh, you know, beautiful time of the year to take a drive throughout the state and go. Um, I, I think we're having that in Lyme again. Um, and this will be an opportunity uh, to go inside the exhibit, enjoy it, but then also be able to go outside and, and share. We did that this year. We had what we call the gallery talk there. Um, and we did it multiple times throughout the day. So we kept the numbers small. And yet then people stayed outside and had coffee and cookies um, together in the lawn, so to speak, uh, and enjoy themselves between the, the, the talks. Um, and I think that's a new, uh, I, I'm calling it new, it's something we've never done before. And we're finding it's a great way for people to be able to communicate and be with each other and, and, um, and feel confident. I'm hoping at that point, we're all confident to be inside and be a part of, uh, uh, you know, each other's lives indoors. But we're planning to do it, to, to have everything have many different legs so that whatever you do, you're going to feel comfortable coming to experience the arts. Now, you're mentioning the webinars, which will be done uh, technologically speaking. Do you think that technology and Zoom and other visual effects will be here to stay as the pandemic starts to shift as compared to being outdoors? What are your thoughts? I, I think we can get a lot of education and a lot of um, enjoyment of learning about other people. And I think we can get a lot of our meetings done quick, more quickly. I, I'm, I'm one to schedule a meeting that I think is going to take an hour in for a 45 minute meeting, because I've learned that what we, we used to do when we met in person is we'd fill that hour with other stuff. And now we can actually get the business done more quickly and then have time for the, uh, around the coffee pot, uh, enjoying each other. So I, I think it's going to stay in terms of the mechanism of getting our life work done. Uh, but I think that's going to leave us all more time to experience art, to go out to the show, to have dinner together and then see uh, a production of, of Romeo and Juliet somewhere. I'm hoping that that actually that we've learned to get our day to day tasks and our, I'll say, meeting stuff done more quickly. I think, though, the arts will continue to use them as a way to um, look into the lives of artists. Uh, much like what you do, Deborah, every day is to help us get to know people. And I think that often what touches uh, the arts lover is learning about the artist. And so I think that I think this world of Zoom and world of the Internet, I think, has allowed us all to get to know people better in that way. So then when we're in person together, it's even more exciting. The webinars, will that continue? How do you find your guests? Is there a subject matter that you like to tackle? Great, great question. So we have two standard guests for all of them, which are uh, Stan Vermoon, the Dean of Yale School of Public Health, and Crystal Paulette, who is the uh, engineer uh, who um, we ask her all the indoor air quality questions, all the um, touching surfaces, surface questions. And I keep thinking it should be over, that we should not have these anymore. But every month we send out the survey that says, do you still need our help? And today they still need our help. And so um, as we morph out of this world, we're actually looking at all the other things that we've done to help these institutions. And we'll probably continue to um, I'll say be post COVID, be available to arts institutions to help them with um, many of their consultation needs. Uh, because it often, I guess what we've learned is working together is the best way and not to be so uh, in our own world. So a lot of the institutions, we'll, we'll pair four or five institutions that we see have similar issues, have inter similar challenges, have similar desires. And we'll put them all together um, in a consultation together and have them We'll just mediate and help guide. Uh, and so I see a lot of that continuing. 
Um, I'm hoping we're not talking about the pandemic as much anymore. I'm hoping we get past that. But I think for a long time, we're going to be trying to figure out how to reach all those consumers who found other things to do than go out and be in the arts. So we're hope I, I think it's going to be a lot of trying to help each other find our way back to the arts. Well, we're starting to run out of time, so I want to thank you very much for being here today. My pleasure, Deborah. Thank you so much for having me. I just want to again say www.shorelinearts.org for anybody who wants to check out anything that we're doing. And, um, and thank you again, Deborah, for, for all that you do. You're bringing the arts into the community is so, so very important. Thank you. Thank you. And for anybody who wants to volunteer on the program, please contact me. I'm at artsandentertainment at mail.com. Don't want to forget that as well. Well, you've been tuned in to Arts and Entertainment. I'm Deborah Gilbert. Thanks so much for being here today. Hope you enjoyed the show. Have a super day. I'll see you next time.